Yeah, really actually easy cap so far here from the allies. Beating access to the punch. Uh, artillery doing good job from the allies on the back side. You can see on the right side of your screen there, denying access the ability to push on a point. I think this is going to be the allies' point fairly easily here, unless Humple Pumple and Harald can do just an insane kind of push here and get a bunch of kills. It's going to be hard though. You got a full WTH squad. DC, let losers on point two. And then that core squad on the top of your screen there takes the high ground too. I think this is going to be a, a 3-2 fairly easily off the start here for the allies. Let's go on board with physics here. Or phys... Physk... Physics? What am I saying? Physk here from WTH. The Wolves of War. Looking for some kills and some peeks onto the Axis players. Just going to be content holding this, uh, this cover right now. No need to push out. Cap progress is at 80% here. Doing a really good job for the Allies team. And just like that, it is 3-2 off the bat for the Allies. Taking the game fairly easily, taking the first point of the game, that is. Not too much the Axis could have done there. I mean, they're just, the deployment was slow. They were very conservative with that deployment at the point, and that just kind of ended up costing them uh, a chance to fight for it. Very early deployments from, from their transport vehicles, you can see there. That's really loud. Test. There we go, okay. Explosions are super loud. <clears throat> so second core squad looking to push up. You got Godsend and Fritten there with S1, but I mean, Cult also having to go so far wide here to flank onto uh, the top of the radar installation. Just way, way so far off point here. And it's gonna be an uphill battle because look at how many allies are standing between them and point. There's so many. High ground is valuable, though. We are at the top of the skybox. That's how much elevation change there is on Hill 400. It is so intense. Usually at the top of the skybox, you're way in the sky, but here we're just above the action. You go on board with uh, Planchang. Yeah, is believe. Yeah, of course, the squad lead from Cult. Russian clan. Uh, new up and coming competitive Russian clan, that is. <clears throat> we see a Stewart pull up. Hopefully Colt has some AT at their disposal because they're going to need it in a few seconds here with this Stewart coming down the road. Kind of odd too, the, uh, usually we don't have this issue with the, uh, the indicators and the icons for the players. But this map is so elevation, like there's so much elevation change that it really can get a little confusing unless we're like top down like this. Second rocket comes in, and there is the AT, aforementioned AT from Cult. Good job taking out the Stuart. I mean, tanks on this map are just a pain in the butt. It's going to be up to Don D to hold this. They take out one, um, and there we go. We got we got respawns. We got Crusader from Core, Para, and uh, Demi also. So I don't think Cult's going to have too much success with that. They do get the Stuart, though. That's a little bit of fuel wasted, but again, this is Hill 400, so fuel isn't the biggest concern here tanks aren't the biggest game changer tanks really get bogged down and and stuck and, and easily killed it has to be said with with a variety of things you know from rockets to mines the, this map is just deadly for tanks now on the south side you can see here uh stdb core we got bomber we got zoom mars make jesus christ all pushing down here trying to get that southern flank going um, allies holding on for now. Heli's heroes out here in the mix, trying to hold um, as best they can, but it's going to be a tough task. You know, Zoom and Bommel, very, very capable players playing recon today. Going to be putting a lot of pressure um, on this south flank. Now, that looks like it's going to be the chance for the allies to do something here, or sorry, from the Axis to do something. You can see uh, Senpu has just taken out uh, Yido Lido. There's kind of a gap now in the lines. I wonder if uh, PBS and STDB Phoenix all know about that. They could 
pretty much flank around between these two forces here and try and get behind the line on Southern Approach. That's the issue though. They don't, unless someone pushes, they don't know, right? I think Big L though has an idea. Seems like he's going to be pushing with Mal uh, Weber. Moin Moin, Mr. Weber. Ran into you before the match there. Uh, really chill guy from Phoenix. He, he sounded like, when I tried to speak German, he said, it sounded like a drunk Dutch guy trying to speak German. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, I have to admit, uh, I, I know little German words. And honestly, the ones I've learned have probably been off of drunk Dutch guys, so it's okay. Uh, yeah, but look at this. This gap is open. Hank is the only one from Helly's Heroes um, able to, to plug this gap, and it's not going to be enough. Uh, Weltmeister leading the charge through here with uh, Maul and Webernect. STDB. Big L's in there, too. Looking for some big W's today. Um, I, I like the, the play here from HP, Benji, and Torfisk. Uh, Hans Gur also. You know, they're rotating, trying to cover their back line. If Maul can get past here, kind of wish Maul and Welt were, were flipped because uh, an OP back uh, behind the point here would be so beneficial for this Axis team. You can see cap progress stalling starting both points a little bit. More so on the midpoint, you can see probably only a recon squad on the next point, uh, defensive point for the Germans. Unfortunately, Maul does go down. Oof, that's a tough loss right there. Um, would have loved to see him go a little deeper and get that OP up to maybe get a respawn to put some pressure on the backside here for the Axis. Uh, Weltmeister is going to take it under his own uh, his own charge to do that. Uh oh, and there is a response. Good response from the Allied commander here. Very good bombing run. That's going to kill five or six and absolutely put a put the brakes on the the flanking push of the axis it's just so unfortunate that maul didn't get past there ended up dying to the shots of hp um and not going to be able to get a op up but 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 weltmeister is on the hunt he's looking for a garrison and i think he spotted one out right now preemptive spot on the gary goes out um he's gonna satchel a transport truck okay it would really suck if there was like a Gary around the corner here. Well, he gets an LP and one kill. Nice job there. Um, no Gary inside here. Gonna have to watch out for Benji though. Benji gonna get the kill there. I wonder if the satchel is close enough <laughs> to kill Benji and cringe. That would be hilarious. The martyrdom. Uh, unfortunately though, Benji gets down a new OP, so it's a uh, it's kind of a moot push there. But uh, no, not enough to get the. Uh, kill and then oh no the Gary was right above him. Oh, that's just bad luck If he had gone left instead of going right he might have got the Gary and also if he had saved his satchel there Doesn't happen in the end though big L though does get through too However, I think the axis or sorry the allies are a lot wiser to this threat You can see how they've pulled back forces now this is only going to do good things for the front line of the uh, Axis team. They need to push up and close kind of like water, filter into those cracks uh, that are left on the defensive line here from the allies as they kind of recover and try to stop anybody from getting their Gary on the backside. You kind of see that happening now with Big L, Rastlan, Maul, Oberst, Mr. B. Um, and train, train wreck is very close too. So it's not a, not a huge issue here. Uh-oh. An airhead? No, just gonna be supplies. It's not a huge issue here. Um, and I think it almost favors the push down in the flank around. They just, uh, the axis just need to, need to be careful not to let uh, Crusader and his whole squad push through this hole in this gap here because that would be very bad. <laughs> uh, nobody there to capitalize on those supplies. I think Crusader might be heading that way, possibly, but right now that is not his goal. Fairly even match here uh, so far. Kind of looks like both teams are making like a yin-yang rotation. Um, the allies on the north rotating around. The axis on the south. However, I, I gotta say, really nice uh, really nice defensive plays here from the allies. You can see their line is set again. They have redrawn that defensive line and are plugging the, uh, the gaps that were made a little earlier. So good recovery. 
Uh, albeit they're much further back than they were before. You can see the defensive line is way far back from where it was, and uh, the Axis team have uh, gained a bunch of ground. I'd love to see like airhead plays coming in here. I think airheads are very viable on a map like Hill 400 where there's just so, it's so hard to see stuff from the sky. It's so hard. Um, you're just in a forest, you know, unless you have somebody on the backside that has a swivel, um, their head on a swivel, they're not gonna catch out those airheads, those supply drops. It'll be very easy for, uh, for a lone squad leader or a recon squad leader to get through the lines and kind of uh, on the backside there. Now, Crusader is pushing through he has found a way through the gap the line gap the defensive line of the axis team now there are supplies kind of in front of the cam now by this broken house here uh, there are allied supplies somewhere in this vicinity uh, for a garrison and attacking one looks like crusaders just gonna go straight into point though um nobody really here to defend for the axis uh like an opa is in a decent spot and he, he he is a squad lead so he should be able to get an op up if needed a decent defensive spot but i don't know if he's gonna gonna see crusader no it's gonna be so hard now crusader's just waiting for an outpost and once that outpost is placed it's going to be a full squad rotation and attack on train wreck uh, even from the position of lycanopa there he, even if he gets a machine gunner down on a squad rotation to defend, it's going to be really hard for them to pick out anybody on train wreck down here. Oh, oh, hold the phone. Crusader gets knocked out. And I don't know, uh, I don't know who quite that was. I think it was, uh, Schumberto. Yeah, probably was. Good play there. It looks like Crusader has some respawns in. Gonna have to be careful though, because it's very, very close to this attacking squad, or sorry, this defending squad. One kill there from Velos. Two. Respawns come in from Crusader's squad. Unfortunately, I think that means the outpost is down. Um, unless there's a medic. No, it's it's definitely down. Velos and Para are the only ones who survive. Unfortunately, Crusader does drop. Uh, so that means that... Well, there's a marker for an outpost here. But that would be an enemy outpost. Don't know why they put that down from the Axis side. Um, but it should be overrun, honestly. They were right on top of it. Maybe just to check and double check, make sure it is down. But yeah, Vilas and Pyre are the only ones left alive. You're going to see Crusader spawn somewhere behind the lines. And oh my gosh, never mind. Maybe there's an airhead after all. Where did all these bodies come from in the last 10 seconds? Um, the double body spawn. Jesus. That is crazy. What is going on here? All right, there's got to be an airhead, and there is an airhead right there. So one airhead comes down as we were watching that fight from Crusader on the front. Um, Lycanopa is about to have the surprise of his life. Physics also in here. Fisk, apologies, also in the mix here. Jesus Christ, Maul and Weltmeister are going to have to have a very, very good defensive position set up to watch this backside because it is about to be the whole team of the allies coming in from behind. Cult, though, wow have a really nice defensive Gary set up. So the defensive Gary doesn't get sussed out here. And that's a huge, huge threat here for the allies. I'm kind of, kind of shocked that that defensive Gary wasn't taken out with the proximity of the airhead. That's one of the only defensive positions um, in the area with, with, you know, cover that, that has a bounds and, 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 and wire and stuff. So quite surprising. Cult gets right in between the airhead and the attacking squad. That that's a huge, Huge boon here for the defending Axis team. They're going to be able to spawn in between the lines. And honestly, this allied attack is falling apart. One cult squad in the mix able to get in between the reinforcements from the airhead and the front line attackers. And unless Fisk can beeline it for this Gary, no, he's going to get taken out. Uh, it's up to Bluter and Vilas here to defend this airhead. And the only, the only squad lead who makes it in there, Nitroglycerina, it's it's not enough to attack the point here now with this many defenders back yeah bluter drops there it's only a matter of time before the airhead goes down and there it is on the road there phony kill uh oh respawn wave comes in though veil 
Lodex, Ragnarok, Pony kill going for the AT rocket kill. Doesn't succeed. He gets gunned down uh, with a machine gunner above the airhead position. Torfisk is going to have to fight for his life now. Uh, lucky for Torfisk, though, he is a squad lead. Going to be able to put down that OP. Possibly keep this attack going. At least bait as many defenders back as he can. We did see some uh, attacking progress here on the mid cap momentarily. You can see, wow, PBS with Rhino, Sempu, uh, Bubba, Worst Guitarist, Tennis, Rommel Bommel, and Humple Pumple from Core. Kind of looking to get a surround here. A odd fight for Southern Approach, considering if we zoom into the south, there's kind of a lone squad v squad uh, battle going on down there. But. Uh, it looks like uh, almost a surround on point here from PBS and Core. Now, I don't see any squad leads on the backside. Oh, Bommel's there. Okay, so Recon Squad from Core on the backside here. Looking to cause chaos. And Core might be onto something. Quick Nick's also in the mix. Let's see. He's spotted out a Gary. Where's that Gary? Ooh, no, it is a half track. No half track marker yet. So using the mechanized and the garrison markers in concert to mark that out. All right, that works. Rumble Bumble is dangerous with whatever kit he's on. Very good FPS player here. Uh, maybe shouldn't have hyped him up so much because that is the commentator's curse getting dropped by Benji. Seemingly not looking uh, in front of him there. Quick Nick's going to get the drop though uh, right after from OC. And the Sharks are circling here. Quick Nick's in a very good spot for an attacking outpost. And there hasn't been any rotations yet. Uh, finally, Profex and HP going to be rotating to the west. Uh, Quick Nix, if he gets an OP up now and gets a squad rotation, it could be what takes this point. I think he's placed it a little further back here. And is playing aggressively looking for kills. But I would love to see an aggressive uh, outpost for him. Potato there from Quick Nix, somewhat out of character. Chris uh, does one does him a solid though and walks right up in front. Quick Nix trying to go off here, get as many kills as he can. He's got three, he's got four finally. After that potato, he's gonna make up for it and now pushing the garrison right here. Oh, if there's a respawn onto this garrison. I think Quick Nick should be able to get it though. Big play here from Quick Nick's from OC. Taking out the Gary, killing three or four on point. And just like that, uh, giving the Axis a way back into this game on the midpoint. Good job from Quick Nick's here. Meeting up with Godsend and Fritten from Core. New Gary goes up. Benji all alone on the backside. Oh no, Quick Nix beelines it for the Gary and gets taken out by HP. Benji, quick thinking, gets a, a shaky Gary up here. And it's all up to these three or four players to hold this point here. It is so close. Grenades coming in on the Gary. Hennis from the backside. Ninja Pulva also. Benji, though, getting some kills there with HP and Chris. Good play, good play. Hennis, though, and Ninja Pulver do pose a threat to this Gary. And it's trying to be a sneaky boy coming in from the backside. Decides to do some yoga instead on the stairs. There is a machine gunner below us. I believe he drops him with one shot. That's two kills for Hennis right now, pushing this Gary. Sees Para there. Oh no, he doesn't see Para, unfortunately, for Hennis. Smart play, though, to back up and try and gain the tactical advantage here. Maybe get inside. Oh no, doesn't. Isn't able to get inside the, uh, the wire here. And respawn comes out from the Axe, our allies. Wow. So Axe is getting really close there, taking out the Gary once. Um, it, you know what? The Axis are in a really good position, though, right on the front gate of this, Gary. It is last stand defense here for the allies. 
And the only reason the allies are still in this fight is, is because of Benji. Benji, quick thinking on his feet, puts down that Gary again, gets the respawn in here, but it might be too little too late. Only Crusader HP and Klex up to defend this one. Rhino's going to make a push for the Gary right now. Oh, it's so close. Grenade's just... <laughs> he can't push the Gary because there's so many nade spam coming from behind him. Oh, Crusader gets exploded. Rhino's on the Gary. This could be it here for the Axis. Second time's a charm. Rhino going to get the Gary here. And with that, this should see some cap progress here for the Axis team. Good play from the PBS squad following up on the good initial play uh, from the Axis attackers and Quick Nicks there. Uh, bombing run kind of potatoes. Not going to lie. Misses really everyone. Don't know who that was from. We could check the map really quick and tell you. Um, that was going to be an Axis bombing run there. Missed the majority of the allied fighters. Uh, but this this battle on point is heating up. Quick Nicks, however, from the backside, able to clear out a few bodies and possibly crush an OP. I think he did crush it on the backside. It's a good play there from Quick Nicks. A little bit of a sandwich play, just kind of an eliminating all the allies off the point. You can see cap progress has started already. And the Axis look to, to, look to go back 3-2 uh, on this one. Take the point back for themselves. And there's no allies here to deal with it. Uh, we did see the allies take that high ground. And you can see a few bodies. Um, but if we go up here, it's all the way on the other side of the radio uh, tower. So, yeah. Good play here from the Axis. Power coming on the backside. Don't know how much he can do. Fisk also on the backside. Ooh, ally bombing run dropping. And it just misses too. It threads the needle, actually. <laughs> Threading the needle between the PBS squad and Rhino. Uh, it's Sultan and Core Godsend. Let's go on board with Fisk here. See what he's got. On point. Oh no, he gets destroyed by artillery. I wonder if he was able to get an OP down before that already came in. Hopefully, for his sake, he was. Uh, cap progress continues, however. And oh no, boys and girls, look what I see on the horizon. You got Zoom, Zonic, and Major Wolf all on Bergstein Church right now. And how much do you bet? How much do you want to bet that they have already taken out the, the Garys over there and are ready? Uh, yeah, respawns coming in. Oh, this might be a two for one special here. You can see Sirius, uh, Dwarf House, Bommel all pushing the next point already. And we're not even capped yet. It's going to be 3 2, but expect a close fight for 4 2 starting very, very, very soon. Sorry, 4 1. That is Axis. Go up on this 3 2. Nice push kind of from both sides, from the back and from the front. And there we go. Cap progress has already started onto Bergstein Church. Wow. Look at this push here from the Axis team. And where are the allies? Where's their response? We're going to need an airhead defensively here. There's no, uh, there's nothing though. They don't have a bombing run. All there is is a tank. So maybe a recon tank can pull up. Maybe this tank falls back and sets up an airhead in one of the uh, hamlets to the northwest. That's the only thing I can think of right now that might save this because we're about to go 4 1 and look at all the blue bodies on point. Absolutely crazy play here from the from Major Wolf, from Zonica, from Zoom, from Bommel, setting up on the backside, taking out the Garys, and allowing this Axis team to go instantly from a 2 3 to a 4 1 into their advantage. Really nice tactical play on the attack here from the recon squads. Really good job, guys. Props to you. You can see spawns coming back in, and oh my gosh, that is a lot of orange. Kind of trapped between a rock and a hard place. Not really attacking from anything other than a fallback from the last point. I don't think it's going to be enough, honestly. Maybe a reinforce? I mean, oh no, but Benji drops. Torfisk is the only squad leader here. Nitroglycerina is not really in the play right now. Um, and we don't know. Do they have a reinforce? Are they going to use it? Torfisk, Torfisk is alive here, but nobody's really in cap to challenge. You can see it's close on the backside uh, on Southern Approach, but no cap progress is being made. 90%. I don't think there's anything the Allies can do here, and it's going to be a 4-1 for the Axis team. Right, Taking the rug right out of the Allies there and flipping this game on its head. Wow. Good job, guys. Good friggin' job. 4-1, 99% about for it right now. Yeah, nothing that the allies can do.
There it is, 4-1 off the bat, and wow, this game has been flipped completely on its head. Respawn's desperately trying to get back into this one to, to stop the, the push of the Axis team, um, maybe making this a 5-0. Don't think they're set up just yet. We can check the map here. You can see the spearhead is Bommel. There are going to be supplies right on the edge of uh, the first sector of the U.S. lines here, and Bommel is almost on that point. I wonder if the Axis have an airhead. Oh, but it's going to be hard. They have to redeploy all their troops from Southern right now to defend here and then set up for the next point. Because if they get too thin, they're just going to get pushed off and, and go back down 3-2. As we rotate here, you can see Bommel. Um, decent defensive setup already. It's shaky at best. Uh, convoy ambush is on the low ground here. So it looks like Bommel, Big L, Clink are all trying to hold the high ground on their side. Uh, and yeah, I think the Allies have done enough here to secure their last point and not be in threat of uh, getting pushed immediately. You can see supplies coming down. Bommel's just going to wait for that and put up a Gary uh, on the high ground there. Good, sensible decision there. Um, you should be able to shoot through these woods fairly easily. It's not, well, I say that, but it's not the densest of forest here um, to contend with. So that's a decent high position. You see there's like bunkers and, and stuff around there too to shoot out of. Uh, if we rotate back to Bergstein Church though, look at what the allies are doing. There, there's not enough bodies back here for the Axis. Boys like Crusader, Hank, Yido, Yido Lido, love that name. Thorfisk, uh, NVIDIA, all pushing here. Very shaky defense from the Axis. And I wouldn't be surprised if Cap Progress starts very soon here um, on Bergstein Church. I think the Axis just spread way too thin uh, on the defensive line here, and they're, they're not pushed far enough up where they can they can quickly transition to attack like they did for this point. All right, it's going to be a hard fight. Let's go on board with one of my boys, Rhine, out here. See what he's got. Squad leader roll here. Did a nice job on the last attack. Ended up getting the garrison that won that point uh, the second time the Axis had to push that Gary. I like this from the Axis. Hold this main road. Make sure no one can push. And then a little flanking maneuver here on the southwest side. And just cut through the line of the allied team. Clear the buildings out. Kill anybody that's in the buildings. Clear straight down the side of the line on the flank. Allies can't really push forward. Have to defend against this. And it'll just break up the attack. Nice job here from PBS. I see Colt in the mix too. Phoenix also uh, on this attack. Go overboard. You can see here. Ooh, supplies dropped on the backside. Unfortunately, uh, Ernst and Lycanopa here from Phoenix are right on top of it. M Pit from HLL Italia is just kind of like, oh shit. Well, <laughs> they got my supplies. OP goes up, completely blocking the ability for the Allied commander to get his uh, his Gary up here. And he drops right like that. Nice job there from Lycanopa. Running some interference on the backside, trying to stop any kind of defensive or reinforcing garrisons coming up for the allies here. Now Crusader, 4D chess, goes around behind that flanking position of the Axis, looking to eliminate as many bodies as he can. Drops two, but immediately comes face to face here with an MG42. What does Crusader have against Rambo? Oh man, it's crazy how strong that MG is from the hip. Dude's like strafing back and forth with a machine gun and is able to hold it down. Full boy. It must be so frustrating to go up against. <laughs> Anywho here, you can see a little bit of a rotation from both squads. So as the Axis are on the left of your screen, Flanking the allies have responded by just flanking to the right and avoiding them You can see here WTH DC working together To push the point. Let's go on board with uh, Vicox here and see how many kills he can get on the flank Now this 
does present an issue here. Ooh, gets dropped. A few bodies over here getting dropped. Looks like a, an explosive, maybe an AT might have been employed there. Um, these big fields are an issue, though. If you if you push your flank onto the big fields here, you're going to get shot in the open. Especially with, the, with how well this flank is defended with the barbed wire. So you only have a few little little avenues to get in. Uh, that being said, though, momentary cap progress from the allies. I'm just thinking that sector cap progress. Because I don't, I really don't see a huge push from behind the lines. Not that I can get too high up in the sky to see because we're at the skybox right now. Uh, with the crazy elevation changes on this map. Like what I'm seeing from NVIDIA and Fisk, though, they're trying it. They're trying to flank, but like it, like we said, there's just so much open field. Like, if if Fisk can get maybe a little more to the right here and use these buildings as cover and put some smoke out on the right side, he might be able to push point. Yeah, like kind of like what Crusader's doing right now. Like that a lot. Crusader! Let's see what he's got. Dodge, dip, duck, dive, dodge. Gets through the first line of bullets. Definitely watch dodgeball there. Gets one kill to his name also. Ooh. And then does the dive. 10 out of 10. Predas getting the kill onto Crusader. He does a little twirl and dive. Nice job from him. If only Crusader could have gotten OP up in that vicinity, that would have been so cool. Like maybe on the bottom side here where the wheelbarrow is. Kind of in cover. Although uh, core on the back side... Could support him too, you know. Um, I think an OP right there would be so OP. Pat, get it? OP, OP. Uh, you're close, but there's cover. It's in defilade, and you're 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 far enough that it would be hard for anybody like on the other side of these buildings here to take out your OP for, with proximity. <laughs> Curse of the commentator. <laughs> Yeah, such is the curse of the caster. I mentioned somebody and, and how good they are at FPS and they instantly die. <laughs> oh, man. Reinforcements coming in here for the Axis uh, to defend. Let's rotate over to the last point because, ooh, we got some cap progress. Uh, we also see a rotation of the push, so the allies do take the high ground on the left side. Rotation has been made. Not too sure if it's a Gary. Let's check the map really quick. No, yeah, it is a Gary. So Gary, outpost out, and a, kind of an overall rotation of the attack here um, from this direction. They were coming straight from Bergstein Church. They've rotated around supporting Gary. Outpost going up, maybe another Gary also to solidify their control, kind of make a little line here. But uh, not doing too well in the attack. Only a few bodies really filtering in. And it looks like Wolf and uh, Maul are going to be looking to get some more Garys up. A higher position. Ooh, Quick Nix again from the backside. He is a sneaky squad lead. Very, very sneaky on the backside. Sneaks his way in. Gets supplies. No, no supplies up. Probably just going to be an OP. Regardless, though, good play here from Quick Nix. Let's see if he can do it again. Remember, the midpoint, the thing that kicked this whole kerfuffle off was Quick Nix coming in from the backside, taking down that first Gary and pulling so much pressure back to the point that uh, PBS Rhino was able to come in from the front side and take down the second one. So let's see if he can do something the same again. Quick Nix here from OC showing us uh, kind of a, a nice infiltration gameplay. You know, he is a squad leader, not a recon squad, but doing some nice gameplay from the back, really baiting the defending team back to the, the focal point of their strong point defense and allowing his friendly troops to come in behind and, and fill those voids that are left on the backside. He's got a little bit, a uh, little bit of distance to cover here on the back. See if he can uh, get into the point though. Find any OPs. Find any garrisons. Gonna find a body and drop him. Looks like Benji spawned in there. I'm wondering from where did Benji come. Looking, looking for a Gary, looking for OPs. 
Uh, he should look back towards where Benji was. A few more bodies pop up. Cringe. Potatoes goes down. Benji pops up again. Quick Nix trying to get a few kills here and find out these spawns of the allies. There we go. Crushes an OP. Good job there, but he gets dropped immediately. And you know what? Benji is up again. Benji seems to be the man with the plan here. Always stays up when there's a when there's a challenge from behind. He's gonna be able to put down that OP again, no problem. Now, are we gonna see any rotations on the backside? Yes, we are. Quick Nix is back up. Big L is back up. Well, for the time being, we also got Sirius and Mr. B too. Where is Sirius shooting? Uh, up the hill, okay. Up the hill at core here. Forty-nine minutes to go here on squad line battles. Four-one for the Axis team off of a really nice double cap uh, started by Quicknix. He is also again attacking from the backside. You can see squad rotations coming in. However, a lot more defenders are wise to this right now. Crusader does get dropped by Sirius though. Uh, you can see Liege, the one Riche. They they don't want to repeat it last time. They are pushing hard. Big old last one alive here on the outpost. Ooh, can he can he hold this? He's pushing like four, five, six v one right now. No, Big L goes down. I wonder if we're gonna see some respawns here. Probably some juicy kills. Leash is close. There we go. Quick nicks. Oh, three drop instantly. Ninja Pulver actually is still alive, but he drops after. There's gonna go the attack. Now, does this do enough? Leash gets the OP now. Does this do enough to bait bodies back? While there are a lot of bodies to get baited back, you can see allies have firm control over to this side of the map. They own it. I think the next step, and yeah, we see a rotation here from Maul. The next step would be to get behind and above with an airhead, maybe off of a, an outpost play. So you have the high ground. Once the high ground is taken, that would make it a lot easier to push down onto the defending allies. Now, Maul does get one kill. He's running straight into an OP, though, uh, from the allies. Let's get on board with him as soon as he drops, unfortunately for him there. feel like I'm the caster's curse today. Whenever I get onto someone, they get shot in the face. <laughs> now, importantly here, Axis still hold the high ground. They have this high ground position here with Clink and Char. With garrisons to support. Uh, let's rotate back over to the church. And see what's going on here. You can see respawns come in. They uh, firmly, firmly hold the church here. Axis doing a good job now. The the issue here is if too many Axis push too far off, you know, there's a, a sus uh, susceptible threat from an airhead play on the backside. That's going to be dependent on Allied Recon getting here, though. Allied Recon need to make it around. Um, the best, my best bet would be from the northwest here, or even Nitroglycerina. Get OPs down behind and then uh, drop an airhead and reinforce with OPs. You can use a bombing run to kill anybody who pushes your airhead. You should be in a good spot then to uh, take the point. Look how far the axes are pushing. They're just clearing house. I wonder if they're going to push all the way to the... Uh, oh, as we see supplies drop and push all the way to the HQs. So supplies drop in here for what I assume is nitroglycerina. Kelly's heroes working to rotate on this. Uh, Dorfus needs to get his head up in the sky and look to the right and see this because it is a threat. No markers as of yet, though. Kind of surprised about that. That was hanging in the air for quite some time. There we go. All right, good marker there. Uh, respawns do come in. Garrison's marked out. I mean, the garrison hasn't even been placed yet. So that's good that there's a push. The response comes from Sirius. And uh, I think this threat will be able to be dealt with fairly easily here. Nitroglycerina is just beelining it towards those supplies. He's not going to make it, though. 
He's going to get shot in the back here by S1 or Sirius. I would love to see uh, Rom and Bibus kind of support Nitro right here. Maybe that's exactly what we're going to get. Nitro wins the 1v1 there with S1. Needs to patch. Now, I just I don't know where the supplies are. If he can get an OP. No. No, he can't. He can't get an OP or a Gary down from cover. Sirius does enough to kill Nitro. And that's going to kind of put a plug in those plans. Would have loved Rom to, to, and, and Ibis to help the squad leader out there. Protect him while he puts down the OP or the garrison. Gonna be a few minutes before the allies get back into this one but when they do they're gonna be attacking from the northwest here you can see they've kind of rotated off the southwest side and, and trying to form their kind of new lines between uh their defensive point on the right side of your screen and this bergstein church point the only negatives to pushing through there is that there's so many open fields it's very easy for a few tanks and or machine gunners to really hold it down Pushing, pushing through the fields on the right side of this point, like looking from this POV right now, is very, very hard. I've tried to do it a few times. It can, it can work if you got the right smoke. You know, you're using explosives and you're, you know, at the right timing, like your rockets to to hit specific positions. But it's it's not easy by any means. Uh, as we say that though, Rom beelining it towards the Gary. Is he gonna get it? Yes, Rom, sneaky, sneaky. Gets the Gary, gets killed. Hashtag worth though. Good job. I don't know how Nunik did not notice Rom there. Seems like Rom was right under his nose. Uh, he does get it though. Good job. One Gary goes down. I believe Vernervoss is going to be replacing that one anyways. Maybe in a better spot. That was just in the middle of the field there. Um, supply drop has been ordered in Roar River House. We check the map right now. Uh, so that Roar River House, supply drop going down. Looks like Axis going to be trying to make that line again. Get that Gary position set up so they can attack. Um, recon pushing on the backside. Surprised no recon is is on the RD. Maybe we don't have anybody on the RD because look also. Uh, Mios also not on the RD over there. Gary is hot on the south side. Ooh, spicy. Let's, uh, let's check this out. Let's rotate here. So... Two-pronged attack coming out from the allies. And you know what? Allies are making cap progress here. Wow. On Bergstein. And this, this cap progress is literally only... You know, they're not in the strong point at all. This is all ancillary cap progress. On the side of the cap, they have enough numbers. And they're making it. Wow. I'd be surprised if this doesn't get stopped almost immediately with a, with a squad rotation or a respawn, redeploy onto a garrison on the back. But still, it's, it's good... Good momentum here. They're doing what they need to. Fisk, uh, Rom, Tom Cruise, Vicox. They need to push straight through the town right here. That's where the most cover is afforded. You can utilize your smokes effectively there to push from cover to cover, not just kind of concealment or hedgerows. They just don't really have the bodies. Looks like they're they're splitting their forces up to the south. Also, um, but they're they're not moving fast. You know, love to see maybe a half track on the south deploy to try and draw some of these forces off the front and then smash it on the front with a majority of your force might be an option you can see cult respawning to deal with this threat from the flank gonna be running right into torfisk there nvidia is a little wiser though does a bigger flank trying to outflank the flank of the flank i guess <laughs> Pushing right towards that cult OP. Let's go on board with NVIDIA. See if he can if he can grab that OP, pick it up. Shouldn't be too hard. Uh, as soon as the next spawn wave comes in, if he's looking that way, it's going to be uh, like taking candy from a baby. One taps, one member of cult there. Never heard of DC. They are the rats and they love cheese. I'd love to see them like just use cheese strats really live up to their name of the rats speaking of cheese strats i don't know if anyone saw the uh, hpl semi-final oh unfortunately for nvidia there he uh 
Didn't have his gun up when that respawn wave came in. Uh, cheese strats, speaking of cheese strats there, yep. So the last point, Core Crusader took a half track and got two road kills before parking uh, the half track onto the last point for the five. That was uh, very cheesy indeed. Mpit finally finds a way close to point here. He's going to have to defend, though. Hopefully, Core helps him out. Going to be a uh, traditional Gary. This is a very, very common Gary spot to attack the point. Uh, like we touched on earlier, the issues with this Gary placement, though, is you just have open fields between here and the point. Very, very easy to defend. Chip's trying to... Nope, not successfully there. Core's going to help defend uh, the Gary with Mpit. So yeah, as we scroll up, you can see here there's a there's a hedge, there's hedges, there's trees, but there's open fields. And then there's this defensive position here. If you know some Axis members can get inside this defensive position, it'll be very hard for the allies to push. Uh so many little spots of cover, so many places to hide, broken house. However, you know, the Axis haven't responded to this yet. Finally, Rhinout Werner Voss, Fritten pushing now. And like you can, you can see these elevated positions are so key so many different spots you can you can peek make it very hard for anybody pushing from the allies side to get here we can't go through the window womp womp let's go on board with Fritten. is he gonna push out here and attack yes all right come on Fritten. let's see what you got See what you got, buddy. STG-44. Now, the Axis do know about this attack. They are trying to develop a defensive line to deal with it. Going to be hard, though. The Crusader's shifting, which is smart. He's going to be coming around from the backside to try and open up a two-front uh, two attack here. Crusader drops two there. Let's go on board with him. He's going to be rotating, basically, around to the backside of point. Trying to get up another outpost. So when the Axis do deploy and try to defend against this push from the from the west, northwest, they can come in from behind and try and take out as many as they can on point. However, while we're watching this, cap progress significant of a significant nature is happening on the last point. That that re-attack is working so far. Only three defenders left. Greaves. Oh, big respawn gonna put a plug in that cap progress. Let's see what Zoom can do here. How many kills can they get? They have a surround on this last Gary. One, two drop, three drop, four drop. Uh-oh, cap progress has started again. Now we might have a little old-fashioned cap race here, and whoever can get onto this Gary is going to get so many kills. Man, I wish I had AT right now. About every 30 seconds or so, there's going to be like 30 people respawning here. Uh-oh, Zoom. Can he get it before the respawn comes in? Nades go out. Respawn comes in. And the attackers are dropping. Not enough nades to get the kills. 4-5 down. And just like that, the allies secure their back line. Oh, momentarily, though. Cap progress is still coming. Going to need another respawn wave. I just don't see that many axes left to reassault this point. No, everyone who was close is dead. Major Wolf, Zonica, and Sultan Ibrahimov are going to need to get here very fast because you're going to see about 20 people respawning there very soon. And can it come, though, before the end of this match? It's bound to. This is the last respawn wave. This is where it all counts here. Can the allies hold on instead of losing 5-0? There's the respawn wave. It's not enough, though. It is not enough. There we go. Finally. Oh, no. It is so close. It is so close. So many bodies from the allies coming in. And if only there was a bombing run here, this game would be over. But no, alas, there is not. The allies <laughs> survive at 98% cap progress with one respawn left. Man, I just wish Harald Major Wolf would have pushed there. If they could have pushed, if, if just an AT was there available, as soon as that respawn came in, he could have got like 30 kills and won the game. So close there. Props to the allies there for recovering, respawning. Another respawn wave comes in, and Harald just sees 20 people appear in front of him. Three, four go down. Five go down. Six go down. Harald is getting tons of kills here. It's not enough, though. He just can't close the gap. 
Finally, Bombing Run comes in. It's a little too late, though. And the Bombing Run misses. Misses the Gary. Harald's getting attacked from Ale Ragnarok on the left. I don't think he has a clue. Now he does. Oh, Harald with the play. Is he going to get the Gary? Are there enough respawns? It's so close. Yes. Harald gets the Gary. Just a little too late, though. I mean... It, the, the opportunity for attack is still here. The allies have a much better position on point, but do they have supplies? Benji goes down. Uh-oh. That is a big trouble here. Now, Liege is up still. Are there any supplies? Airhead is also coming down here from the Axis side too. Or is this an defensive airhead for the allies? Let's check really quickly here. Yeah, it's defensive air airhead for the allies, but I think it's too little too late. You can see the cap progress has started again. The allies just don't have the bodies back on the point. Airhead comes in a little too late. And you know what? That big spawn and reclaim of their point is going to be all for naught as the last defenders are wiped out here by Fritten, S1, Nunik, Ninja Pulver, Bommel, and Predas, Mr. B. Good job, guys. You're about to win squad line battles here on this Tuesday afternoon. Uh, in Well, in North America. Evening in Europe. Pump -pump Pumple's there. Harald's there. GG, guys. Uh, it was a nice, valiant fight by the allies, but, you know, I don't hear a bombing run coming in. That airhead's going to go down right away, and there is nobody left here to defend for the allies. As the Axis look to take it 5-0 and win squad line battles for this Tuesday night. Wow. I would have loved to see a bombing run wipe out all the Axis there. <laughs> that would have been epic. Unfortunately, doesn't happen. And just like that, the game's over. I always put up a Valiant fight. They just, crucially, when they lost that first garrison, there wasn't already supplies down on point to pop one up again. I think if there was pre-planned supplies dropped on that last point, like right on the strong point, then there would have been time for another uh, another Gary to go down and maybe another spawn wave to defend. Uh, didn't happen in the end, though. It's going to end 5-0 for the Axis team.